Well, hello, friends on YouTube. I want to learn Python and web scraping. Welcome to another Python web scraping tutorial. Today, we are going to talk about crawling an entire site. So, in the previous uh, videos, we took a random walk through a website going from link to link. But what if we need to systematically catalog or search every page on a site? So crawling an entire site, especially a large one, is a memory intensive process that is best suited to applications where a database to store crawling results is readily available. However, however, we can explore the behavior of these types of applications without actually running them full scale. And we will learn more about running these applications using a database in a later tutorial. So when might uh, crawling an entire website be useful and when might it actually be harmful? Web scrapers that traverse an entire site are good for many things, including generating a sitemap. For example, there was a case a few years ago when a person faced with a problem, an important client wanted an estimate for a website redesign, but did not want to provide uh this clients this consultants company with access to the internals of their current content management system and did not have a publicly available sitemap so this consultant was able to use a crawler to cover their entire the customer's entire site gather all internal links and organize the pages into a, the actual folder structure they had on their site so this allowed the consultant to quickly find sections of the site he wasn't even aware existed and accurately count how many page designs uh, would be required and how much content uh, would need to be migrated. Another example is, uh, for example, gathering data. Same consultant and, uh, and a cli uh, client of his wanted to gather articles uh, stories, blog posts, news articles, etc., in order to create a working prototype of a specialized search platform. Although these website crawls didn't need to be exhaustive, they did not need to be fairly expansive. Uh, there were only a few sites uh, that the consultant were, was interested in getting data from. So he was able to create crawlers that recursively traversed each site and collected only data it found on article pages. So the general per general approach to an exhaustive site crawl is to start with a top level page such as the home page and search for a list of all internal links on that page. Every one of those links is then crawled and additional lists of links are found on each one of them triggered triggering another round of crawling. Clearly in this situation that can blow up very quickly. If every page has 10 internal links and a website is five pages deep, which is a fairly typical depth of a medium sized website, website then the number of pages that you need to crawl is 100,000 pages before you can be sure that you exhaustively, exhaustively cover the website. Strangely enough, while five pages deep and 10 internal links per page are fairly typical dimensions of for a website, there are very few websites with 100,000 pages or more. The reason, of course, is that the vast majority of internal links are duplicates. So in order to avoid crawling the same page twice, it is extremely important that all internal links are discovered. Uh, the internal links that discovered are formatted consistently and kept in a running list for easy lookups while the program is running. So only links that are new should be crawled and searched for, uh, for additional links. So let's do an ex example of of this. So 
So let's get to our boilerplate. And from DS4, we import beautiful soup class. And then we need to import regular expressions. And we put the pages in a set. I'll explain in a second why, why, why we do it like this. We define our get links function. And I'll get back to also why it's global here. expressions to, to define our links. Store. Wiki slash slash wiki slash and if href link attributes Conditional and they are not in pages and sets. Then we have encounter a new page. Set then we get the links on the new page and we start off our script with an empty string. Now let's try to run it. And I have a problem if link in and we should of course spell it correctly. running and it will start to crawl 
So in order to get the full effect of how this web crawling business works, we've relaxed the standards of what constitutes as constitutes an internal link we are looking for from previous examples. Rather than limit the scraper to article pages, it looks for all links that begin with slash wiki slash regardless of where they are on the page and regardless of whether they are they contain columns. Remember uh, that article pages do not contain columns, but file upload pages, talk pages and the like do contain columns in the URL. So let me stop this script. So what's happening is that initially get links is uh, called with an empty URL. This is translated as the front page of Wikipedia. As soon as the empty URL is prepended with HTTP and en.wikipedia.org inside the function, then each link on the first page is iterated through and a check is made to see if it is in the global set of pages, a set of pages that the script has encountered already. If not, it is added to the list, printed to the screen, and the get links function is called recursively on it. And one note on recursion, excuse me, is that um, this is a warning that is rarely seen in software books, but we thought you might be aware if left running long enough, the preceding program will all will almost certainly crash. Python has a default recursion limit. Uh, that means how many times programs can recursively call themselves. And the limit is 1000. Because Wikipedia's network of links is extremely large, this program will eventually hit that recursion limit and stop. Unless you put in a recursion counter or something to prevent that from happening. For flat files that are fewer than 1000 links deep, this method all usually works very well with some unusual exceptions. For example, a consultant once encountered a website that had a rule for generating internal links to blog posts. The rule was take the URL of the current page we are on and append slash blog slash title of the blog dot PHP to it. The problem was that they could append uh, slash blog slash title of blog dot php to urls that were already on a page that had slash blog slash in the url so the site would simply add another slash blog slash and so on so eventually the cr crawler was going to the url the urls like slash blog slash blog slash blog etc eventually the consultant consultant had to add a check to make sure that URLs weren't overly ridiculous, containing repeating segments that might indicate an infinite loop. However, if, if uh, the program has been running unchecked overnight, it would have easily crashed. So make sure you have these kind of checks in your code. So this is it for this uh, video and I uh, hope you have enjoyed the video. If you have done so, please subscribe, like the video, comment, share the video and I hope to see you in the next video. Okay, bye guys!